right, we'll go ahead and get started. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Thankful once again that God has blessed us to be here this morning. For our announcements today, we want to ask everyone to remember those who are sick and those who are shut in, doing your phone calls this week. We see Sister Marshall is on here, and we know that she's sick, and pray for the entire Marshall family as they can overcome this illness. Also, please remember that uh, our Zoom meeting on Thursdays, 7 p.m., prayer meeting. And remember that we are still having our Wednesday night Bible study in the auditorium. And Brother Kevin is doing a good job on the class, like he always does. If you don't, we want you to update all your information in the, in the part of the directory. We know a lot of our communications now is coming by phone, by email, and whatever else we can use. So please update all your information, make sure it's correct, so you can get the announcements from the church. And remember that uh, Southwestern Christian College, the lectureship will be on YouTube this year, and you'll be able to watch it on the, it's listed in your bulletin. You'll be able to watch it on YouTube. So look, check, look at your bulletin and uh, check out the uh, Southwestern Christian College lectureship. And this announcement has come from Sister Kathy Wilson. She wants all, asking all sisters to please look at the back of the bulletin to see if you're on here for greeting and taking temperature. And say so they are trying to rotate the sisters so that no one will have to do it all the time. So pay attention to the uh, back of the bulletin, and uh, ladies, your job will be to take care of the temperature so one person won't have to do it all the time. And the last announcement I have comes from Sister Bias. Saw her on yesterday, and she told me to use her exact words. <laughs> and she said, she said all the money in Commercial National Bank couldn't have made her feel better than where y'all made her feel on last weekend. So she said she was 
She was so surprised. She couldn't do anything but sit there and cry. She was just so happy. And she said thanks to everybody who came out and did that for her. And she was, she was overwhelmed by it. And we thank you. Whoever set that up, you did a great job. And that's all the announcements I have for this morning. I want to ask you to pray for Jeremiah. We got to take him back to Memphis. Uh, they found some spots on his lung that's gotten bigger. So he's having to go back up there. Keep us in your prayers. And at this time, uh, Brother Bobby Robinson, if you would come forward from a word of opening prayer. And uh, then Brother Lewis Tyler. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you this morning for letting us arrive this, rise up this morning and see this new day that we've never seen before. We know that it's nothing that we have done that we deserve it, but through your mercy, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you. And Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for this congregation that meet here on the Russell Road, and I ask you to bless us, Heavenly Father. And the ones that sick and can't be here today, we ask you to have mercy on them and bless them, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for you, to you for our leadership here, not only here, but throughout the nation, Heavenly Father, that for whatever they do, they may do it for the sake and the best of the, best of the, for the people. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to bless us and Heavenly Father, these things I ask in our Son, Jesus' name, and I pray and give thanks. This I give thanks in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. First selection will be, don't you want to go to that land? 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 Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but love. In that land, yes, nothing but love in that land. There's nothing but love in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. There's nothing but love in that land. There's nothing but love in that land. There's nothing but love in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Don't you want to go? To that land, and don't you want to go to that land? I don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, and don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? And don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, there's nothing but joy. In that land, yeah, there's nothing but joy in that land. There's nothing but joy in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, there's nothing but joy in that. Yeah, nothing but joy in that land. There's nothing but joy in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, don't you want to go? to that land, uh, don't you want to go to that land, uh, don't you want to go to that land, uh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound, uh, don't you want to go to that, yeah, don't you want to go to that land, uh, don't you want to go to that land, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. I got a savior in that land, yeah. I got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. Where I'm bound, 
where I'm bound. And I got a Savior in that land, yeah. I got a Savior in that land. And I got a Savior in that land, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. I don't you want to go to that land? And don't you want to go to that land? I don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. And don't you want to go to that land? Yeah, don't you want to go to that land? I don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Mansion over the hilltop, 479. I'm satisfied with just the cut is below, oh, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want to go one that silver line. I got a mansion just over the hilltop. In that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder, we'll never more wander. But walk the streets that are pure as gold. Though often tempted, tormented and tested. And like the prophet, my pillow of stone, and though I'll find there no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a match of my own. I got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder, we'll never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Don't think me poor, or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim. In search of a city, I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder, We'll never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. It won't be very long. It won't be very long till this short life shall end. It won't be very long till Jesus shall descend and then the dead in Christ from beds of clay shall rise to meet the Lord and King up yonder in the sky it won't be very long it won't be very long till Jesus shall appear that day is drawing near. Will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng? Get ready for that day. It won't be very long. It won't be very long till here we cease to roam. It won't be very long till all the saints get home, and then with smiling face, we'll walk
up the streets of gold and sing the Savior's praise. Where saints are never wrong, well, it won't be a long. It won't be very long till Jesus shall appear. That day is drawing near. Will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng? Get ready for that day. It won't be very long. It won't be very long till earth shall pass away. It won't be very long till works of men decay. But Jesus has prepared a happy dwelling place for all who look above and trust his matchless grace. Well, it won't be very long. It won't be very long till Jesus shall appear. That day is drawing near. Will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng? Get ready for that day. It won't be very long. We prepare for the Lord's Supper. Let's notice 155, the old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dear rest and bed. of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the book of Acts, the 20th chapter, in the seventh verse, it says, Upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. We being a New Testament church, we do likewise. In 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he breaks it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are sick and weakly among us, and many sleep. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we so grateful and so thankful for this opportunity to come out this morning and commune one with another. We ask blessings upon this bread that represents the body of our Lord Jesus and the cup that represents his blood. We pray, Lord, that as you partake of it this morning, that we might partake of it in the same manner in which it was given, with bowed heads and humble hearts. Amen. Now let us partake of the Lord's Supper together. Amen.
am before you because we are commanded to give as we have been, we have been prospered upon, upon the first day of the week. We find our scriptural find our scripture concerning the collection, 1 Corinthians 16, chapter verses 1 and 2. It reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. If you have not had the opportunity to give already, raise your hand and I will come by and get your offering. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for another day. We pray for those who gave, pray for those who desired to give but did not have it. We pray that this offering might be used for the building of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, let us say amen. amen. Our scripture this morning will be taken from the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verses 1 through verse number 7. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Once again, that is Nahum, chapter 1, verses 1 through verse number 7. The burden against Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, God is jealous, and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserves wrath on his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. They will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm, and the cloud, or the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea, and make it dry. He dries up all the rivers, Bashan and Carmel wither, and the flower of Lebanon wilt. The mountain quake before him, the hills melt, and the earth heaves at his presence. Yes, the world and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can endure the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading. He is in of his word. Let us all now stand for a word of prayer.
let us reverently bow. Most kind, wonderful, and gracious Father in heaven, it's with our heads humbled and filled with thanksgiving that we approach your throne of grace on this Lord's Day morning. Father, we ask for your continued blessings upon the body of Christ that meets here upon the Russell Road. Father, we ask that you would continue to shower us with your grace and your mercy as we endure these pandemic times. But Father, we like to thank you as always for the precious gift of Jesus Christ who hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cruel cross that we might have this privilege and this opportunity to call upon thy name in prayer. Father, we ask that you would bless this congregation of the Lord's body in particular, that your blessings might be upon our minister and all of the leaders here at the Russell Road family. We ask, Father, that you would crown their heads with wisdom and knowledge, give them courage and faith, Father, that they might lead in a way, Father, that is in accordance with your word. We pray, Father, that your word and might take precedence in all of our decisions. We ask your continued blessings upon our minister, Brother John H. Dansby, and the entirety of his family, especially his wife, Sister Doris Dansby. Father, we also ask for our young assistant minister, Brother, jo Brother Vincent Gordon. We ask, Father, that your blessings might continually abide with him and his wife, Karen Gordon, and all of his family as well. We pray for the leaders of this congregation in the form of the deacons and the rest of the leaders, Father, and their families. We pray, Father, that you would place a hedge about us as a body of Christians, fitly joined together. We ask, Father, that no hurt and harm might befall any of us, but that you might watch over us and protect us. We ask, Father, that you would continue to shine your all-seeing eye over this nation in which we live. We ask, Father, that all of those things that are done in secret, those evil deeds that are done in the darkness by the leaders of various countries, and especially our nation, might be brought to light. Father, we ask that, that you would forgive us of our sins and our transgressions, that we commit against thee, Father, as you give us the faith and the determination, Father, to forgive those who trespass and sin against us. Father, we ask your blessings upon the further proceedings that we're about to undergo in our worship service this morning. We ask that all things that we do and say might be in accordance with your holy and divine will. We pray that our songs that we sing and the prayers that we have prayed might be acceptable in your sight, and that you might receive them, Father, in the manner they are given, and that you might lend your ear to our call. In Jesus Christ's precious name, let us all together say amen. amen. <clears throat> let's say amen again after that wonderful prayer. I heard on the news that they have two vaccines ready. Now, I don't know about you. My wife says she's not going to take it. But as soon as they call John Dansby down to take that vaccine, I'm going to take it, okay? And I'm going to encourage my wife to take it. They said that both of them are better than 95%. I don't know how long they last, but if they don't last for one day, <laughs> I'm going to take it. And I want to encourage you to take it. Amen. We're glad to see all of you here today. I'm glad to be here. After we had heard of the viruses that was in our congregation, the brethren said, let's meet. I said, no, we're going to give people a choice. Whatever choice they want to make is their choice. My choice is to be here. Doris's choice was to zoom in. 
but we both had a choice. So we'll always have a choice unless the government shuts us down. The brethren, as far as I'm concerned, won't do it. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Latest program tomorrow at 10 o'clock on Zoom. You have the information and uh, Jarlin, Doris, and Karen will be in that program. Please remember Kathy, in your prayer she goes Tuesday to the doctor, I believe. Doris goes back Tuesday to the doctor. You know, she's been having problem with that left eye. They got a special uh, lens to put in that eye. She puts in the daytime, take it out at night, and it's supposed to make that eye see everything good. They say, Mr. Dabby, you might not be able to get this because your insurance don't cover it. I said, you going on and order the thing, man. Don't ask me them questions no more. Because if I don't have it, I get it from Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Henry, uh, but it didn't cost that much. Look into the lectureship. We're thankful for the food giveaway. And Christopher Kelly is going to leave to go help him out with the coronavirus somewhere else. And we need him here. Because we don't have enough health care workers here, according to Kathy. So... <laughs> But we're going to be praying for you. The brethren has asked me to announce that you pick up some giving envelopes as you go out. And then you fill them out at home and put them back in that they won't have to walk around to get them. And so I announced that. Founders Day today on, uh, on uh, YouTube, Southwestern, will be at 2 p.m. Gloria Marshall is now at home, Vanita and Jesse, so remember them in your prayers also. I got a word from a friend of mine in Dallas that the, the thing is going so bad in Dallas, and we're thankful it's not in Shreveport, that they're having an average of two to three funerals a week. So pray for them. Pray for Phyllis, uh, Philip Wade, he lost his father in New York. Remember him in the prayer. Remember all of us in your prayers. And please remember Jeremiah and Robert and Bev and Tosh. We'll be taking him back to St. Jude. St. Jude is a real good hospital. I contribute what I can to them, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. They never get a bill from St. Jude not even for travel or lodging or food. It's really a good thing. St. Jude and the Serranas are the only ones that I give to, and the church. And neither one of them is going to dig into my church contribution. And I applaud you for the way you continue to give to the church. I'm glad to have Vince here with me. Brother Brown told me a long time ago that the older you get, the sickness of your folks will have an effect on you. So he never lied to me. Whenever I hear one of my people here getting sicker in surgery and I can't go and be with them, it really takes a toll. Pray for them. <laughs> All right. Song of invitation will be just as I am. And the song before the lesson this morning is we'll sing hallelujah by and by. When we reach the city of the new Jerusalem, where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah by and by. 
How the ransom singers will together lift that hymn. Where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Oh, what joy when we get home. Where we're going to rest beneath that cloudless storm in that land, that land. Where saints never die, where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. In that mighty chorus, voices will so sweetly blend, where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Gone will be our sadness, pleasures there will never end. Where well, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Oh, what joy when we get home. Where well, we're going to rest beneath that cloudless dawn in that land, that land where saints never die. Where well, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Victory and love will be everlasting thing. Where well, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Praising our Redeemer there beside crystal string where well, we're going to sing hallelujah sing hallelujah by and by oh what joy when we get home where well, we're going to rest beneath that cloudless dawn in that land that land where saints never die where well, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by singing. Oh, what joy when we get home. Where well, we're going to rest beneath that cloudless storm in that land, that land where saints never die. Where well, we're going to sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, by and by. Go ahead and say amen again. Amen. Good morning, family. I like that. Family. And truly you are my family. God has blessed us to be here this morning and we have prayed, we have sung, we have prayed, we have communed, we have given. And I believe God is pleased with that. I believe any time that we lift our voices collectively to him on this day, on this first day of the week, on this, the day of a start of a new week that God has blessed us with. And I like to say that if we didn't get it right yesterday or the day before yesterday, we have today to get it right. That's a gracious God. That's the gracious God that we serve. I'm so glad that he is God and he's God all by himself. I was up here yesterday and I was able to witness and see the food giveaway it's just something how it's organized and how folks are coming through here. And look, earlier that day, earlier that morning, I was looking at the news. And I don't, I don't know where it was. It might have been Houston. I don't know where it was. But it was, I saw four, almost looks like four or five lanes of traffic of folks lining up to get food. And I still say that most of us, all of us at this morning, got up and we, we, we looked at food. And we might have said, well, I don't want that. We decided whether we want to eat or not, or whether we want to go somewhere else and buy something. We had that choice. But there are folks right now, this moment, this hour, this second, that don't have anything. We ought to be able to thank God for that. 
truly God has been good to us. And we often say God is good and all the time God is good, right? That's kind of a mantra almost that we, we kind of pronounce and it almost becomes cliche -ish. But it, in, in this book this morning that we're going to look at, Nahum, three chapters, this book bears the name of the author Nahum, which means comfort or consolation. And really, when you look at the book of Nahum, I want you to understand this morning, it was re it, it's really a, really, it, it, it could be the, the, uh, uh, the, the second book of, of, of Jonah, if you will, because it's nothing more than it gives you the other half of the story. We know that Jonah went to Nineveh, and he preached to that city, and they, and they repented. But now it's 100, 150 years later, and now Nahum is pronouncing judgment on Nineveh, the capital city of Assyria. And so these 100, 150 years later, things have changed. Uh, 100 years earlier, they had repented in, 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 of, their, of their wicked acts and, and turned to God. But now, just as we do sometimes, uh, we forget. Uh, we're short-sighted. We, uh, we, we, sometimes we make a deal with God, and God, if you get me out of this particular situation, if you get me out of this particular thing that I put myself in, I'll serve you. And then, as soon as those things are over, we get amnesia. We forget the, the promise that we made to God. It's almost like we're, we're, we're trying to bargain with God, but uh, if, if I understand correctly, in order to bargain with someone, you have to have something to bargain with. We don't really have anything to bargain with. Often, often uh, uh, teach Travis, and he's not here right now, but that is good. I'll just tell you this. He often told me sometimes, he said, well, Dad, if you do this, I'll, I'll do this. I used to tell him something you don't have anything to bargain with. <laughs> Everything you have is mine. I gave it to you. And so, and so when we try to bargain with God, think, think if I really, how silly that is. God, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. We don't even have anything to bargain with. But here, this, this, this a nation that, Assyria, that had destroyed the northern kingdom in 722, uh, God is pronouncing judgment on God had used them to punish Israel for their sins. But God would also punish Assyria for their disobedience and hatred of the people of God. And so on one hand, the book is, is, uh, of Nahum is actually a book of discomfort to the Assyrians who are persecuting the people of God. But on the other hand, it is actually a book of comfort for the nation of Judah who are now being impressed by the Assyrians through their kings. And so the question begs this morning, if things were so bad in Nahum's day, if God was in the midst of punishing Assyria for their sins, if God was also in the midst of punishing his own people, if disobedience to God was on the rise, God gives Nahum a message of doomsday to all around him, how does Nahum make this proclamation? How does Nahum Say this, with all the unrest, what did Nahum see that caused him to make a, such a bold statement, a bold declaration, the Lord is good? How did he do that? God called this nation out of, out of from the rest of the world, Israel, to be a blessing to the rest of the world. But here, they themselves were sometimes corrupt. And so as a result, God sent various godless nations in to, to punish them. 700 years before Christ, he sent the Assyrians. And even during this tragedy of, uh, uh, because of, uh, of their turning away from God, Nahum was able to say, by the grace of God, God is good. See, grace is the love of God shown to the unlovely. Grace is the peace of God given to the restless. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace is free, the free sovereign favor to an ill-deserving people. Grace is the love that cares and stoops and rescues us. 
Grace, grace is the God reaching down to a, to a people who are in rebellion against him. Grace, grace is that unconditional love toward a person who does not deserve it. You see, grace is most needed and most understood in the midst of sin, brokenness, suffering. We live in a world of earning and deserving and, and merit. And these only result in judgment and condemnation. That's why everybody needs grace. We all stand in the need of God's grace. We have a tendency to fall apart during difficult times in our lives and, and not able to see beyond ourselves. But Nahum was able to see far beyond them. His eyes and his emotions were able to see beyond that. He had a deeper appreciation of, of God's grace, even though he probably didn't understand it at that time, but he had an appreciation for God's grace. We struggle sometimes in this area because we often see God's grace and we look to each other to get it, to find it, whether it's a parent or whether it's a, a relative or any other uh, a person. We, we sometimes, uh, our experience with, with sinful and broken people affect how we look and understand the holy grace of God. We're unacquainted with grace and mercy and truth because of our sin condition. We have a tendency to look at grace through the eyes, our own eyes, instead of God's eyes. And so when we speak of God's grace, we mean all the good gifts we enjoy freely given by God. Salvation is a is a free gift, is a free gift of God. Salvation pulled us up out of the muck and mirror of life and, and gave us a new way. God's grace. God's grace coming down in the form and in the person of Jesus Christ. This is what Nahum was able to, to tap into, to declare such a proclamation in the midst of calamity. And we don't get this this morning. We don't understand this process, we will continue to fall apart in the midst of trouble. James says, count it all joy, but, but, but we, find we have a hard time being joyous in this time. But I'm trying to tell you right now, God is trying to show us something. I'm not saying that God caused this pandemic. What I'm saying is, is that, that in this pandemic, we can see something that God is trying to do for us and with us have to be able to see it. If we don't see it, we don't see it, then, then we, we, we have failed him in this life's journey. This freedom itself is mo most unique because it's given to mankind. And mankind has a, has a problem with sometimes with choosing. Sometimes we choose the wrong thing. We have a problem with our choices. He's given us a capacity to choose. But we don't necessarily choose the right things. You know, we, we go to the store sometimes. We know that we need to get wheat bread, but we get that white bread. <laughs> we know that we should get a, you go, we go to that restaurant and, and that nice steak is sitting there, but we ought to have a salad maybe sometimes. We choose the wrong things sometimes. Psalms, uh, uh, the 100th division, verse number three, the Bible says, Know ye not that the Lord is God? It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. Jeremiah 1 and 5 said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God has given us free will, even though he knows the choices that we're going to make. Isn't that something? God knows the choices that we're going to make. And in spite of that, he still was grace upon his creation. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? God has allowed us to choose. And because we have not always chosen the most graceful path, we have ended up in some miserable conditions. We have. We all have messed up in this life journey. We have all made some bad decisions in this life. We have all leaned on our own understanding when we should not have in this life. And when we, when we grasp our predicament and call for help, 
that we previously spurned, amazing grace steps in. Every time, every time we messed up, every time that we have spurned the, the, the word of God or his direction, grace has stepped in. Nahum learned to lean and depend on God's amazing grace. Most of us, most of us don't trust God enough to lean and depend on his grace. Most of us have not yet developed that type of relationship with the Lord to lean and depend on his grace. Most of us have turned on God because we have never learned to lean and depend on his grace. Most of us will find fault in God sometimes because we have never learned to lean and depend on his grace. Now, how can you say that, Brother Gordon? How can you say that? Because I'm you. <laughs> I'm, I'm you. I'm not, any, I'm not anyone special. I, 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 don't, I don't have a hold on, 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 on the grace of God, on everything that I tell you this morning. When I preach to you, I preach to me. I preach to myself. Nahum found no fault in God because he understood the grace of God. Therefore, in the midst of all this mess that he was experiencing in the nation, he was still able to proclaim the Lord is good. See, I want you to know this morning that, that I agree with the prophet. Our God is good. Our God is good. And you know what's great about him? You know what's great about God? God doesn't stop being God just because we stop being good. Just because we stop being good, God doesn't stop being God. He's always good. He can't help but to be good. But God, in, God is good to the unchurch and the church. He's good to the beggar and the rich man. He's good to the sinner and the saint. In Matthew chapter uh, 5 and verse number 45, the Bible says he makes the rainfall in the just and the unjust. That's how good he is. That's how good he is. When we fail to acknowledge him before we were baptized for the remission of our sins, he was good to us. When we fail to even know who God was, he was still good to us. Still good to us. He sent the rain on the just and the unjust. See, sometimes we act like we've been, you know, friends with God all of our lives. We look good. We smell good. We talk well. We speak that God talking. You know, how are you doing, brother, this morning? God is so good. I had a brother of mine said, that's God talk on Sunday morning. Do we talk? We had that same talk on Monday morning? Monday night? How about Friday night? Saturday night? I'll stop. Let's move. But it should, really, this should encourage us because our nation, like the Assyrian nation, has wandered away from God. The Assyrians were some of the vilest, meanest people of the era. But they, had, but they were no more vile and evil than the people in America today. This morning, I, I get flashes on my phone constantly about not, not, not violence around in, in Texas, not violence in Mississippi, not violence in New York, but violence right here in Shreveport. Constantly I'm getting alerts of what's happening here. We have despised God's law. We have ignored God's word. We have found countless ways to cut God out of our lives. And as a result, America is, is, is in turmoil. America is in turmoil. Our elected officials behave like children. They behave like children. Our economy is in an upheaval. There's a steady decline in morality. There's a steady decline in, 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 in how we, in, in, in the home, in, in, in the, in, in the uh, would say in the church, but you have to look at it. 
And just as Nahum in our text, in the midst of judgment, he was able to, able to say, we should be able to say the Lord is good. We have to be able to say that to a lost and dying world. The word good means pleasant, agreeable, rich, valuable. The word describes the very character of God. It is the very character of God. In fact, in fact, when we look at this, regardless of, of the realm of life, the law, God is still good with our finances, even with our, uh, our, our dysfunctional government, people, pain, problems, sin, sickness, even death, God is good. Even death, God is good. Still good. We're living in difficult times. We are. I understand that we are living in difficult times. Times and it seems like racism is back on the rise again. Mass shootings, churches, concerts. But I can still tell you this morning the Lord is still good. He is good to all people in all places, in all situations, at all times. And in spite of how we look, feel, and appear, He's still good. Still good. This is an assurance that, that He's going to be good in all situations, all circumstances conditions, God is still going to be good. He can't help but to be good. Can't help. And I know it's easy to say that the Lord is good when life is going well, but what about now? What about right now? Times that we live in, we, we should still be able to say that the Lord is good. Nahum was able to say that. In some of the, some of the most chaotic times, he was able to say that the Lord is good. It has to be ingrained in us. This might be a, a good time to, 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 to say and to praise him. It might be a good time to, to reconsider how we are living our lives and, and, and really the direction that we're going. There was a story of a little boy who was complaining about school, or how that he didn't like what was going on in school. He was complaining to his grandmother. And his grandmother was making a cake. And as he was listening to him complain about his school and his family and his friends and how everything else was, was going wrong, she asked him a question. You got some cooking over here. Do you want some of that? He says, no. It tastes nasty. How about a few raw eggs? Grandma, I'll fix you a couple of raw eggs. He said, no, I don't want that either. That's, that's yucky, Grandma. What about some flour? Flour? I don't want flour, Grandma. That, that's, that's nasty. And then he said, the, the, all of those things that you, do you want to give me, Grandma, they're all yucky, they're all nasty. And then his Grandma looks at him with those wise eyes. And she says, Yes, all those things are not yucky by themselves. But when you put them all together. See, you miss your shout. See, when you put them all together, what I'm saying right now is all the things that are going wrong in life right now, all the things that are, not, that are negative in life right now, all the things that are not just not going right, when people just don't like you for, be, for, for you being you, when people will just shoot you for just being you. When folks will talk vile about you just because you are being you. God says when you put all that nastiness together, I can make it good. I can make a good cake if you just depend on me. You want some scripture for that? We know that all things work together for the good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. See that last part of that? His purpose. God has a purpose. God has a plan. God has worked all of this out already. We just need to, we just need to, to stand by and wait. Is that what the Israelites did last Sunday when we spoke? He said, stand still, 
wait, look, see. That's what we need to do. Because God is not going to stop being God. He was God then. He was God yesterday. He was God this morning. And he's God now. And he's always going to be good. He's always going to be good. God works the same way now. Many times we wonder why. Why? He lets us go through difficult times. But we as, but we as his children have to trust him in spite of, in spite of, despite of circumstances. And know that it's going to work out. It's going to work out. We've had some sickness here this week. We have. We've had some sickness here this week. But guess what? We're still here right now. See, the evil one thought he was going to close us down. Shut us down. God said no. God said no. And then we had some folks in the hospital. And God said, go home. Don't tell me God is not good. He is good in spite of us. He is good because he is good all the time. He can't help but to be good. He's always been good. He will always be good. And we have to recognize that and embrace that in our lives today. Don't leave here today thinking God has forgotten us. Don't leave here today to think that God has abandoned us. God has got us. He's got this. He's got this. I'm not concerned. He's got this. He's always had it. We've been wondering who has it, but God has always had it. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure out where this is all going. God already has it. He knows where this is going. He knows the end. And he knew the beginning. He knew when it started. He knew when it was going to start. And yet, he still allowed us to be here this day to witness his greatness. Where are you at this morning? Where are you at this morning? Where are we at this morning? How good has God been in our lives? And how have we thanked him for it? This is the season of Thanksgiving. We're entering into the season of Thanksgiving. How thankful are we are to a God that's good all the time. Even when we fail to be good, he's still going to be good. Isn't that something? That's, a, that's, that's just like a mother's love. See, a mother will love her child in spite of I know that mother's love. Father's love That's what we do. You don't want to live up, you want to obey my, you can, you can go. My dad told me that a long time ago. You don't want to do what I tell you to do? But a mother will say, no. That's a mother's love. That's the kind of love. And I, I'm saying this to say it's the kind of love that God, but God ha has far greater love for us. And so if you're here this morning, you want, to, you want to really have that love, the love of God in your life. Then here how Jesus died, buried, rose again on the third day. Repent of your sins, confess him. Submit yourself to water baptism. But if you're here this morning and maybe, maybe you have pushed away from God's love. Maybe you have in your own way spurned God's love. God's love. He still wants you to come back home. The door is always open. The door is always open. Never going to close it. The only time that door will be closed is when time is no more. But right now, time, we have time on our side. And so once you come, we together, stand and sing. Just as I am
sir. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Merciful Father in heaven, it's with our heads bowed that we approach your throne of grace and mercy one more time today. Just to give thanks, Father, that you've allowed us to gather in this place to worship thee. We give thanks, Father, for your messenger, Brother Vincent Gordon, and the message that he delivered. Pray that it will fall on good hearts. We give thanks, Father, for those who stood, for Stuart, for Anthony, for Gary Richardson, Father. We pray for each of them that you would address their needs as only you can. And be with the rest of us, Father, and keep us safe from all hurt, harm, or danger as we remember all of those who have doctor's appointments on this week. Jeremiah, Kathy, and Doris. We give thanks, Father, as we remember Sister Gloria Marshall, Sister Venetia Williams, Sister Carol Abner, Sister Iris Johnson, and all of their family. We give thanks, Father, that although the virus has infected some of us, that it has not resulted in a serious condition as it could have been, and it has not resulted in death of any. Father, be with all of us. Bless us and keep us in your care as only you can. In Jesus' blessed name we beg and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Tamika Edwards is a herbalist. And uh, Tamika, Tamika Mosley, I'm sorry. And she has given, I've been taking some herbs that's supposed to build up my immune system to guard against the virus. I don't know whether it's working or not, but if you want me to give you a list of them, I will. Larry Burrell had her down there a few months ago, and he has the virus, and he's treating it with herbs, and he's doing real good. Carolyn Allen treating her sickness with herbs also. If I get sick, I'm going to take herbs, but I'm going to the doctor too. And so, <laughs> but I want you to know that there are many other ways to die beside the virus. Yeah. Might have been somebody up here on a corner this morning as I drove in. They died or something happened. There was a number of police cars, fire wagons, and ambulances up there. I don't know what happened up there, but that, I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. And uh, I know that I have a number of health challenges in addition to my age. So I love all of you, love every one of you. But I'm not going to be doing as many bumps as I have been, OK? <laughs> now, when you go to the doctor's office, they ask you, have you been around anybody who's been sick or anything like that? And you have to answer no. That should be your same thing as you enter the church. I went to my arthritis doctor the other day, and I drove up, parked, and there was a sign there. It said, call. Don't come in. Call. And we'll call you when it's time for you to come in. They don't want you sitting around. And so we got to still be careful. Eventually, he get alerts on his phone. I'm glad I don't get them on mine. I'm glad some of y'all don't get them on yours, because we wouldn't be able to handle them. Brother Jimmy and Sister Lisa Washington, we're glad to have you with us. 
We give you address is 111 East Fairview, Shreveport, Louisiana. And your home congregation, South Main Church of Christ. Blade Walk. But you're in Shreveport now. We hope to see more of you. We hope to see more of you. And, and, and I personally recommend the Russell Road Church of Christ. Amen. You might understand that I'm biased. I'm biased. I love all my brothers and sisters in here, and I can vouch for every one of them. Place membership here. You'll be glad you did. Amen. As he said, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could hear all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly singing no not one singing no not one Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for leadership here on the Russell Road. We pray for Brother Sister Benita Snow, covering her and spreading her during her coronavirus. We pray for Brother Jeremiah, covering him and spreading him during this chemo. We pray for Brother and Sister Jenkins, keep on watching over them and strengthening them. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross that we may have a right to a tree of life. We pray for Brother Vincent Gordon that he continue to preach, preach the gospel throughout the brotherhood. We pray for Brother Blanton, continue to him during his sickness. We pray for those in Harvard and traveling, God back safely. We pray for the South Christian College lectureship, they'd be a great success. We pray for Brother and Sister Danny, keep on watching over them and strengthening them. We pray for our deacons to continue to do work in the yard. We pray for our worship services have been accepted at our side. Now, we pray for our sins, those who sin against us. Now, as we depart to the place, God to meet again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Be sure to check with Marion. The Girl Scout candy is here. The Girl Scout candy is here. Okay, we're gonna have a little something. I don't know what time. Pick up your Girl Scout stuff. Pick it up. Bring me mine. Bring me mine. I'm hungry.